Donald Trump is campaigning tonight in Michigan, a battleground state that has gained even more attention than usual this election year due to the Israel-Hamas war. You might remember, back in February, more than 100,000 votes in the state were cast for uncommitted instead of for President Biden in the primary as a show of protest against his handling of the war. A new CBS News poll shows more than one-third of Michigan voters want the president to encourage Israel to stop its military actions in Gaza. And nearly a quarter want these actions to be decreased. Joining us now is Abdullah Hamoud. He is the mayor of Dearborn, Michigan. Dearborn is the city with the largest Muslim population per capita in the nation. Mr. Mayor, thanks so much for joining us. I want to start by asking you about what we've seen the past few days on college campuses. And I want to ask you if you think that the pro-Palestinian anti-war anti message, which many Americans would say is a very valid message, is getting overshadowed by the tactics that are being used by some protesters, including encampments, taking over school buildings, blocking entry to campus, that sort of thing. I think if you look at history, if you look at the protest to the Vietnam, Vietnam, the war in Vietnam, if you look at the protest to uh, apartheid South Africa, many of the protests happening today on campuses largely resemble the, the protests that happened in the 80s and in the 60s. And so unfortunately, even then, the protesters were viewed by mainstream media uh, as being perpetually in the wrong. Unfor you know, I, again, these are folks who are protesting against a genocide, protesting against the idea that their tuition dollars, that our U.S. taxpayer dollars, are being used to fund the ongoing genocide that has now killed over 35,000 Palestinians, half of which are children. Mr. Mayor, the White House has sent some high-ranking officials to meet with you, and I'm wondering if you feel that the concerns that you shared with them, the concerns of members of your community have been understood and acted on by the administration. Yeah, absolutely not. I think we have seen a slight change in tone as it reflects in the recognition of Palestinian suffering, but we have not seen any substantial or significant change in policy. To this day, our president has still been unable to call for permanent ceasefire, which is the only means of bringing home all the hostages and prisoners across the entirety uh, of, 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 of uh, the conflict, um, as well as that inability to hold Benjamin Netanyahu and the most right-wing government accountable for restricting access to humanitarian aid. And we're still looking Looking for that final push for this president to also call for once and for all the establishment of a just Palestinian state to end this in a positive resolution for the Palestinian people. How do you think that the president should hold Netanyahu accountable? I think he has the ability to pick up the phone today and end the endless supply of weapons and bombs that are being dropped indiscriminately on residential towers. When I have a resident come to us and talk about how he had two grandmothers who had to be dug up from under the rubble because 2,000 pound bombs were dropped indiscriminately on the residential towers, that is unacceptable. And we have a president that is able to stop the supply of weapons, to restrict military aid. You know, we have found just recently, obviously there's been many documentation by experts in genocide, experts in, uh, in war crimes by NGOs and international organizations who have found uh, the Israeli uh, IDF complicit in multiple war crimes. Yet we have a government that looks the other way and has refused to hold them accountable. Uh, Mayor Hamoud, uh, we had a recent CBS News poll. It was out this week, and it showed that President Biden and former President Trump are neck and neck in your state. As a Democrat yourself, uh, you know, you've articulated some of your frustrations with the Biden administration, but have you decided whether you will support President Biden for re-election? And if not, do you think that Donald Trump would do more for the Palestinians than Biden has? At the time, I haven't even thought about what I will do once casting my vote come November. What we're aiming to do is utilize all the tools at our disposal right now to hold this president accountable, to try to get President Biden to move with the center of the party, because the center of the party has moved. You have seen in poll after poll, even with the images that you have shown on the screen, that the majority of Democrats, independents, and even Republicans are advocating for permanent ceasefire. The majority of young people believe that what is unfolding uh, to be is now a genocide. And the majority of Americans also believe in restricting military aid uh, to the Israeli government. And yet we have a president that has refused to heed the concerns of the constituents that he is trying to represent from coast to coast. And that is what we were trying to do, hold this president accountable and keep surmounting that pressure until we see change. I want to ask you about an issue beyond the war. That same CBS News poll I mentioned showed that more than three quarters of voters in your state listed the economy and inflation as major factors for them in this election. Many of them also said they felt the economy was better 
under Trump. What's your view? Was the economy better then? I think right now, from a municipal perspective, as mayor, we have access, obviously, to many resources due to transformational legislation that has been passed, allowing us to make investments that have been deferred for quite some time. Obviously, we're facing challenging times, as is every country across this globe. Uh, but I do uh, want to return the focus back to what's happening in Gaza, because traditionally speaking, most voters would not have ranked foreign policy as a primary issue that they would take into account when going in to vote come this November election. But we're seeing that shift happen. People do not want want to be complicit in the genocide. And I do believe that the war that is unfolding, that the genocide in Gaza is going to be a top of mind issue for the deciding electorate come November. No question. Mayor Abdullah Hamoud, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.